The Lord be with you. Good morning. Welcome to Rancho United Methodist Church on this Sunday morning. Please rise as you are able to as we go into our first hymn, our opening hymn, number 128 in the United Methodist hymnal, He Leadeth Me, O Blessed Thought. This morning, but it's great to see everyone that's here. Um, I have just a few announcements for you. Uh, June 2nd is actually our preschool graduation. If anybody's interested in seeing how that all happens, um, you're welcome to come and watch the kiddos get their little diplomas. It's kind of cute, you know, they're, they're not too sure about what's going on sometimes, but it's kind of fun to watch. So that's June 2nd at 1130 here in the, in the sanctuary. June 5th, we have breakfast burritos. Order forms are on the bulletin board. You can order ahead or they will be available that morning for purchase after service. June 6th, Monday, is book club. Um, we meet at 1030 in the morning in the youth room. And this month, or June, actually, we're going to be discussing the book The Lost Daughter by Elena Ferrante. So if anybody has read the book and would like to come and discuss it, we would love to have you. If you haven't read the book, but you'd kind of like to see what book club is all about, go ahead and come on on Monday the 6th at 1030 and join in the discussion. Uh, we've had other members come 
and they haven't read the book, but after we talk about it, then they go home and read the book. So you can do the same thing if you'd like. The mission trip for the youth is coming up on the 12th of June. Um, we'll be gone from the 12th through the 16th. We're actually gonna have a smaller group going because a, a number of our kids are either in summer school or going out of town for the, um, the summer, but we're still gonna go and represent our church well. So we'll be small but mighty, so we'll do a lot of great work. Um, we still have the mission emphasis. If you look on the back of the bulletin here, um, Hopefully everyone picked up. We still have the mission emphasis for the Bear Foundation. We're collecting um, summer fun items. So if you would like to do that, you have until next Sunday to bring those in and then they will be delivered to the Bear Foundation. We also, our June uh, emphasis is going to be Vacation Bible School and the bulletin board is all set for it. If you want to help out Vacation Bible School in any way, just go ahead and take a look at the bulletin board. You can take a, either a, a tag, which has an item that we need, or an envelope, which has uh, money donations that we need. All the supplies, as far as the, the basic supplies that we get from the company, have all come in. And that's what's on the little envelope, so we just um, ask uh, donations to help pay for those. So if you want to help in any way, or if you want to come and help during Vacation Bible School, we always need helpers. So if you'd like to know a little bit more about that, please see me and we'd love to have you. And last but certainly not least, we really would like to get the free store back up and running. And in order to do that, we need to go in and do some major organization. So we have a shed out here that is full of donations and they need to be organized and, and sorted and kind of, you know, pick and choose. There may be some things in there that we really can't utilize. And then once we get that cleaned up, then we wanna go up to the free store, which is in back here, if you've never been there, and reorganize and clean the items and make it look really good so that when people come in, you know, it, it's, it's nice for people to come into. And so uh, if anyone is willing to help out cleaning out and organizing and then working the free store, we also will need people to work uh, one or two Saturdays a month. We certainly would like to know that. So if you could let Judy Brunk know, or you can let Raquel know, or you can let myself know, we really need to have people in order to get that up and running. And um, it's, it's a marvelous operation when it's up and running, and we want to make that happen again. So we need a few extra hands. And I think that's all of the announcements I have this morning. We're still waving, and uh, you know, I know sometimes we sneak hugs, but for right now, right here, we're waving, saying good morning. It's good to see everyone this morning. to see people here. I always have a nightmare that I'm going to come here and, and I'll be the only one. <laughs> so thank you for not making my nightmare come true this week. Um, let us go to the Lord in prayer.
We take a deep breath. And we release. And we open ourselves up to your presence. We take a deep breath. And we release. Help us to find comfort in, in your house, Lord. Help us to still our minds that we might hear your voice. We sometimes come with, with more petitions and requests and worries and forget to make time for your still quiet voice. Take a breath. Release it. Hear our prayers, Lord. Hear our prayers for your children, those that are traveling, those who just couldn't make it to church this morning because of circumstances, because of other desires, because they just wanted to sleep in. Bless them. Give them, give them some peace if they have any guilt later, but also give them a desire to be in your presence with your children. And so we come and we lift up those who are sick, those who are grieving, those who are in pain, those who are lonely and hungry, and especially those who don't know you or have strayed from you. Lord, we thank you for what you have given us. Help us always to be mindful that you are in control and that you do have our best interests at heart. And help us take on your peace no matter what the week is going to bring to us. Take a deep breath. and release. Hear our prayers, Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
reading this morning is from Acts chapter 16 verses 9 through 15. During the night Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. From Troas we put out to sea and sailed straight for Simothrace, and the next day we went on to Neapolis. From there we traveled to Philippi, a Roman colony and the leading city of that district of Macedonia, and we stayed there several days. On the Sabbath, we went outside the city gate to the river where we expected to find a place of prayer. We sat down and began to speak to the woman who had gathered there. One of those listening was a woman from the city of Thyatira named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth. She was a worshiper of God. The Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. When she and the members of her household were baptized, she invited us to her home. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my house. And she persuaded us. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Creator, we have come to hear your word. Your word for our lives and the life of this church. So open our hearts, our minds, our souls, and our hearts that we would indeed hear your word. And if, if there is a change that needs to be made, help us see it and give us the courage to do it. Amen. Do a quick search with your Bible software for occurrences of the word vision. This isn't a scientific research project, just, just a quick scan. In the app Bible Gateway, for the, in the NIV version, the word vision appears 104 times. Then look and see where the word is used. In the Hebrew scriptures, the word, the book, the book with the most usage of vision is the book of Daniel. No surprise there. We might have guessed that one given the chance, but then look at the New Testament. The book that uses the word vision most is not Revelation, though it could be argued it is the whole book. No, it's Acts. The Acts of the Apostle uses the word vision 14 times. So what does that mean? Well, maybe nothing. That's not really something you should build a sermon on, right? This isn't a scientific study, and there are many ways the word vision could be used. And, and I didn't even go back and explore whether it's the same word in Greek and or Hebrew. So maybe, maybe just a filler. Yes, it is interesting that in this story, of the beginnings of the church, there are frequent references to the word and idea of vision, specifically of hearing and seeing God's vision as it is relayed to the church through individuals. What does that say about how well we listen to God when we make our plans and plot our strategies for mission and ministry? Do we not bathe all our work in prayer? But do we also take the time to listen for the voice of God, however it might be discerned in our specific context? What might we learn if we listened first and planned afterward? 
For the second week in a row, our text deals with a vision which came from God and its impact on the direction of the church. Come over to Macedonia and help us. We could argue the first century church was closer or, or more comfortable to the idea of vision, especially as dreams as vision and communication from God are not exactly what we listen to in this more scientific age. But maybe that's not necessarily progress. Maybe we've lost something by not being more in tune with the voice of God. And, and maybe this is something we could pursue. It might be helpful to talk about how we hear the voice of God. What does it take? How do we open ourselves to that voice? Is it simply an urge in the pit of our stomachs? Or is, or is it something more? And how do we tune our hearing to that voice? And then once we think we hear a voice from God, how do we test it? How do we discern God's voice from the myriad of all the other voices in our talkative society? When God calls us for the first time, God doesn't tap you on the shoulder and then leave us alone to figure it out. God is a constant presence, guiding, advising, hinting, strengthening us for the journey into discipleship. But how do we hear that voice? How do we know what God wants to say to us? How do we discern God's voice in the midst of all the other voices in our very talkative world? And remember, we don't all always hear God's voice in the same way. Some of us need a, a quiet, meditative, reflective time, maybe to answer a, a, a specific question. What are my intentions for today? How will I use my trip to the grocery store or dropping the kids off at school or visiting my, visiting my parents to reflect God's love and grace? What, what do I need to turn away from to make time to listen to your voice? When you're driving in the car and, and the radio is tuned to a Christian station, what do the words of this song mean to me? Do they encourage or challenge me? God may be speaking to you through the radio. I have the... the U version app on my phone for the Bible. And I've recently turned on, the, turned on the audio and I'm listening to the Gospels. I am making time to listen to God's word because I want to hear God's voice for my life and for the life of this church. Did that sound familiar? <laughs> but wait, you're thinking, Aren't we supposed to be dealing with the text? Does any of this have anything to do with Acts 9? Acts 16, verses 9 through 15. Well, no, but actually, yes. I mean, no, it isn't dealing with the events which took place in this part of the narrative. But yes, it provides some insight into the larger context. So what's going on here? After the vision, Paul gathers up his entourage and heads to Macedonia. We don't see a lot of, of waffling, a lot of questioning. Should I go? Is it real? What are the risks? No. And RSV reads, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia. Immediately. How often have you heard a word from the Lord and immediately changed your plans and your directions and took off in a new direction? Surely some deliberation took place. Luke just doesn't record it, but perhaps because he doesn't think it's interesting. To the story, perhaps. 
but they went. We went. It's, it's great how Luke enters the story here in the famous we passage. He wasn't an ivory tower scribe recording the events of long dead historical figures. No, he was along for the ride. He rolled up his sleeves and jumped aboard the ship. There's a sense of y'all come in this story. There's a passion that is catching, a hope that is inviting. That, that's how it's written. Surely it could have been a later editor, a compilation of stories told and hopes shared, but still, the effect is one of joining up, sharing in. You read these lines and it feels like you're on the team. We went to Macedonia. And then an amazing thing happened. Someone listened. Well, that wasn't all that amazing, to be honest. People were listening all the time. Someone decided to give their life and the lives of the whole household to the cause of Christ. I, I, that's, that's wonderful news and a sign of passion and, and power of the Spirit in the church. But not what was amazing. Here's the amazing part. A certain woman named Lydia. Ponder that for a moment. Dwell on that verse and let the amazing proclamation wash over you. What's the big deal, you ask? How many women in the Bible get named, especially in the New Testament? How many women seem to be in control of their own stories and not the victims or objects of the men who surround them? And get this, get this. She appears to be the head of the household. Lydia and her whole household were baptized into the faith that day. Where does all this begin? We could say it begins with a vision, a word from God that came in a dream, and, and that would be true. But it isn't the whole truth. God is always proclaiming. God is always inviting, announcing, encouraging. God is always reaching out with a hope to share in an act of creation. That is the nature of the God we worship, the God we proclaim. That is the before the story, the foundation on which every story is built. On that hope, that certainty. The story begins with an open heart. A heart open enough to have a dream and then act on it. A dream, a dream for heaven's sakes. A heart open enough to jump aboard a ship heading who knows where and who knows why, to join up and be a part of a mission taking a risk and heading off into the unknown. An open heart that hears a word of hope and affirmation and decides to lean into that word with their whole life and livelihood. The story begins with an open heart. We often want to skip a step, to, to move to commitment, to sign folks up when our efforts ought to be focused on opening hearts. Calling on the spirit to come and open up the hearts of those that we meet. Even as we continually pray, our own hearts might be open enough to catch a glimpse of the Spirit, even when we are sleeping. This week, set aside some time 
It, it doesn't have to be a huge amount of time, maybe 15 minutes, to actively listen for God's voice. I would urge you to, to think what you need to hear God's voice about. Direction for a decision or, or a new path an affirmation that you're on the right track, a way in which you can grow in your discipleship and giving. The Lord opened Lydia's heart to respond to Paul's message. The Lord opened Lydia's heart to respond to Paul's message. As we leave this place, and before you begin, let this be your prayer. Open my heart that I may hear your voice. Let us pray. Creator, we have ears. You've given us ears. And some of us, you've given hearing aids. That's okay. Help us to hear your voice and give us the desire to say, open my heart that I might hear your voice. In Yeshua's name we pray, amen. And before we go into our closing hymn, there's a couple of things I want to mention quick from uh, Music Ministries. One, after the service today, there is an open handbell uh, choir session for anyone that is wanting to try out handbells, no experience needed. We would love to have you. Uh, it'll be after the service around, uh, it will be some time, be around 11.15 or so in the music room. We would love to have you for that. Also, uh, Music Ministries now has a, um, a direct line that you can reach them directly. Um, right now, it just goes to my phone, uh, but it's a number that can live with Music Ministries. Uh, so make sure you keep the phone number 505-892-1381 in your contacts, because you will be able to reach uh, Music Ministries in general through that number. So please do keep that in your contacts. And then finally, um, as you can tell, uh, this is not Clay. Um, Clay is a happily married man now, um, and I can say that's still the truth. He did not get it annulled or something after the wedding yesterday, so it's, he's still happily married and uh, not thinking about this place right now. So instead, I would love to uh, welcome our guest accompanist today, Gabriel Longuinos. Thank you for coming in clutch for us today. We <laughs> definitely appreciate that. <laughs> And likewise, if you want to give your congratulations to Clay, um, you can reach us at our generic um, Music Ministries uh, email address, which is rrumcmusic at gmail.com. That's another one uh, to keep in your safe senders list, because there you might get some things from us occasionally. So um, rrumcmusic at gmail.com. You can send um, congratulations to Clay there. Or if you want to give something physical, um, you can leave it with Rachel in the main office. We'll make sure that he gets it when he gets back. Uh, and with that said, uh, now uh, please rise as you're able to as we go into our closing hymn today. Number 378 in the United Methodist Hymnal, Amazing Grace. <laughs>
like to learn a new Navajo word? Okay, okay. I'll give it to you one, one syllable at a time, okay? Ha? Ha. Go. Go. Ne. Ne. Ha go ne. Ha It means goodbye and what has passed between us is good. Ha go ne. Ha go ne. Amen. <laughs> 